All right, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today I am going to do a video on uh, one of the newer concepts that uh, I have seen. It's uh, actually my head coach showed it to me and then another coach showed it to me uh, yesterday. Some, some guys in the NFL have been running it probably for a couple years now. Maybe it's just this past year, but it's off of the snag variation, which was always one of our base passing concepts. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company we use. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, check out why everybody is making the switch over to GameStrat. Dome Hats, all right, the headwear company we use at Bishop Kenny High School. Every high school I've been at in the last 15 years of my career, we've used Dome Hats. I use them with Playfast, Custom, White Crusader, BK logo, Dome logo. They can be fitted, snapback, Velcro, completely customizable. You design your own hat or have them design one for you. Stock hats suck. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for uh, spirit packs, player gear, fan gear, our sideline gear as coaches. So, it, you know, it's a convenient way to get all of your fan items, player items, coaches items in one spot. Make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. And then Difference USA, Ultimate Striking Machine, thousands of reps. Don't need a partner. Don't have to worry about teaching somebody to hold a bag. Don't have to worry about teaching somebody uh, to provide resistance. They set up on the racks that are already in your weight room, so they're convenient. All right, to set up with the system that you already have. It's perfect for in-season, off-season. If you want to strike violently, you have to practice striking violently. Check out Difference USA. And then Aaron Consulting, our most recent partner. Uh, it's a company that works with coaches and families about the recruiting process, educating you on the recruiting process. And they try to keep coaches at the forefront of recruiting, which is why I like it so much as a former head football coach. I still want to be at the forefront of all the recruiting. I think the parents need to be educated. I think it's you know a great... Uh, you know, system of educating coaches on important dates and NCAA dates, NCAA timelines, and how to build your college network. They are doing a free informational uh, meeting this Wednesday, so all you have to do is sign up. Check them out, getaaron.com, G-E-T-A-R-E-N.com, free seminar this Wednesday. All you have to do is sign up. Information is free. Why not have Aaron help you build your recruiting network? All right, and then uh, if you want any of our uh, virtual clinics that we've done, I've got 10 or 11 of them, 20 hours of football, everything from offense, defense, screen game, game planning, practice drills. Some, there's an O-line clinic. There's an atavist tackling clinic, tight front, 3-3 uh, three, three stack. I get an RPO webinar. There's split field coverage. There's blitz families. You name it, 20 hours of football. All right, you can have it for $10. Every one of those clinics you can have for $10. Email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. So, when I was calling offenses, uh, you know, when I was a head coach a couple of years ago and we were calling offenses, one of our first things we always put in the passing game was three-man snag. All right, so snag, corner, push the running back to run the flat route. And we kept it, all right, as a read away from Mike play. All right, so we would push the back so that we could read off the mic. And on the back side of it, we would carry levels, all right, so where we had Finn and, and dig off of that. So if we got Mike push. All right, we could throw off the will. We had a couple other, uh, you know, at least one other route concept, kind of more shave in or a win concept off the will, but basically a read away from Mike deal. We also threw screens away from the mic. Uh, we threw some receiver screens and in three by one, some tailback screens, all right, away from the mic or mic push, uh, mostly in two by two, and we could push the back and we could declare that early push of the mic. So it was one of those RAM theories for us. It was base. It had a lot of tags on the front side that we absolutely love. So I love carrying it as a base passing concept for us because, you know, instead of carrying six or seven drop back concepts, I was able to put a lot of different tags into the three-man snag variation to get us some of the things. We could attack the middle of the field with, you know, with the, the corner post option and we could run snag wheel to get some rubs and picks and man deals. So, you know, that's how we always started it off. So we started the three-man snag. We started it with push two by two, right? And then if we ever did... When we got into the three by one world, all right, the two ways, obviously, if we get into three by one, the simplest scenario is we could work some type of option game to the single, right? We could work something that we like to the single, all right? And then with three receivers there, for us, it was always snag, corner, and then we'd work the flat or the bubble with number three, depending on who the kid was, who the quarterback was, that we'd like the flat route better than the bubble, all right? So obviously, in three by one, you had that variation. The Chiefs the other day scored a touchdown. To me, more of a smash variation, but the Chiefs were in bunch. All right, and they pushed one out and he became like the wide hitch 
Kelsey ran the corner there, and then they kind of bursted this out to where the snag would be. All right, so they got into three by one, and they ran a variation of the play to where they got themselves a touchdown in the red zone, running it from a bunch compress set. To me, a little bit more of almost a smash combination, but um, you know, you, you got the same theory, you got the, the, the hitch route. So, you know, to me, the, the, the snag and the smash are very similar in nature. Um, as far as the spots you're trying to occupy in the field, you've got somebody in the flat, you've got somebody over the top, you've got somebody sitting for the apex linebacker, right? So underneath, you've got kind of a spacing deal going with the over the top option to the corner out. All right, so the, the Chiefs did it the other day from compressed, and they just kind of burst it out to the flat route. And so instead of traditional snag flat with the corner, they burst it out to a wider hitch, burst it to the, to the, you know, the sit route there, and then they ran the corner over the top. One of the things we would get to in three by one is four strong, and we would make it a spacing variation, right? So we would get to four strong, obviously, for those of you that are nitpicky on how you draw things, obviously if it was three by one, we'd have to figure out what the box was, what they were doing with the nickel, what they were doing with the backside safety, right? So we would run it like a spacing variation for us, all right, to where we would run the corner, all right, we would run the we would still run snag corner flat, so we'd run the corner by two, all right? We'd run snag by one, we'd go ahead and run spot inside by the number three, and we would push the back to create the flat route. So now we had the flat to snag the corner with an inside spot route, right? So that would be the same if you took the running back and ran them like on check down, but now in four strong, you kind of create the, the, the issue for defenses of how they're gonna get five over four, they've gotta match the numbers, now you're going spacing, so if they don't flood underneath coverages, Right, you're trying to get more guys, you're trying to get three underneath players. You still have the peak or the look over the top, but you're trying to get three players in underneath zones that if they can't match or flood those zones, it's going to be very difficult for them to cover all three of those. Right? Well, now what you're starting to see, okay, and what my head coach showed me during the season, and another guy sent me a video of yesterday, is now you're starting to get it to where, at least in the NFL from what I'm watching, or the videos that I've seen, you're starting to get it, and you're starting to get it now where you are you are getting, and you could do it, you know, so the 49ers do it from a bunch of different formations, they do it from all kind of compressed looks and different formations, and then the greatest thing to me about, about what NFL teams do so well is they have a million ways to present the same play with formations and motions and trading guys. Like the Niners will start off in bunch. So like one of the clips I watched, they started off in bunch, all right? And then they brought the, the tight end or the sniffer or the Y, they brought him from bunch over here to make it two back. So they went from bunch to two back and brought him over here, all right? Then when he got there, they then motioned him back full speed this way because what they were creating was they were creating the corner route, the sit route, the swing route, and now they were taking this guy out to become a lead blocker for the swing route, all right? And then they also had their one-on-one -on -one option game, whatever they wanted on the backside, all right? So now what they did is they created the three-man snag variation, all right? And they created it with a lead blocker for the swing route. So if the quarterback liked the leverage, if he liked the swing, now you're throwing the swing or the tailback flare with a player to block a possible force defender. And to me... Where, where that would be, all right, it still creates four strong. You still got to handle four strong, but to me, it kind of handles any of those hard flat teams. So if you were running just regular three-man snag, for argument's sake, and a team decided to play, which you won't see a ton of in high school because of the hash marks, but if a team decided to play hard cover two, okay, and they don't have to match or push the drops, well, now you've got the corner sitting in the flat so he can play the, the swing route. The nickel doesn't have to match or widen with the push because the push is going to the corner, so the nickel sits, and now you've got to run some type of whip option, fine grass with the snag route, all right, because they're not matching it. The corner route can be played by the safety over the top. Well, now when you add the four strong lead swing, anybody that wants to play hard flat concepts, that guy's now out there so that you can handle him in the flat. So now you're throwing the flare with a lead blocker, right? So it becomes almost like the flat RPOs where you're throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage to somebody, so it's okay for you to be out in front blocking, right? And now you can get it into a world where off of the three-man snag and now off of four strong, 
All right, you could do it this way with the lead swing. You could also do it to where this guy, after he motioned back out, if you ran the snag in the corner, this guy, after he motions out, all right, especially if that's your Travis Kelsey and that's your movement guy and that's the guy you're trying to get involved, all right, George Kittle, whoever it may be. Now, after he motions out, he could lead swing or he could actually run the burst and he could run the sit and you get into your four-man, all right, spacing concepts where now you've got the inside sit route. He can recreate the snag there. You can get the corner over the top and now you can go with the flare. So it's four strong. It's got a lead blocker. You're throwing it off your base snag variation. So you're doing things that are off of a base play, right? So to me, that's where it all starts. I don't want to create new plays all the time. I want to have a base play, and then I want to have variations and wrinkles off the base play. So now you're starting in three-man snag. You're starting read away from the mic. You've got backside concepts built in. Once you go to three-man theories or three-by-one theories, all right, you can go with your three-by-one theory. You could also, all right, in the option world, all right, or the choice route world, you could also very simply get the three by one and put the back weak, right? So you can get the three by one out here bunched however you want to do it. And now you can run your normal, all right? So you can run your normal concept on this side. And now to the back side, you can get, depending on the coverage, you can get your back on like the choice option routes on the back side, right? So you can get three man snag on the front with choice option on the back. So you're building it into your base plays. You're building it in to you know, different ways that you can get to all the same deals, right? You're building it into ways that you can have your tags, have your variations, but they're all off the base play. The reads aren't changing that much for the quarterback. The footwork and the drops aren't changing. The terminology is probably just tags off the base play. And you're going from a standard play that you run every day and you're wrinkling it to get several other options. I would much rather have a base play with a couple tags and wrinkles than four brand new plays, right? Or four brand new concepts. So within this concept, all right, I saw it, I, I saw it, another version of it where it became, you know, it was empty, motion back, motion to push them, all right, and now it went to true spacing, four man snag. I saw it in empty, motion back, motion to push, snag corner. Block the corner on the lead swing there, right? So you had this lead swing variation where now you've got a blocker for that flat player. So if they have a flat player, a hard corner, somebody rolled up, a roll down coverage, a kick coverage, whatever it may be, now you've got a blocker for that flat player so that if they take away the snag and the over the top, so like old fashioned cover two, sometimes to the three man snag variation for us wasn't a very good theory because the corner sat in the flat. The backer underneath didn't have to worry about the push motion because he wasn't matching anything because he had a flat player. So he could match the snag and then the safety over the top could match the corner, right? So we always liked it better versus two read palms, even three deep where we could get, you know, if it was three deep, we would run it more spacing and we would put somebody on, on the inside backer, uh, the hook curl player, somebody on the curl flat player and the flat. So we, you know, three by one, try and push strong, see if they could match all the underneath zones, right? And, you know, we would go to, uh, you know, corner, snag, spot, sit, however you want to call that over the ball, and then the, the push all right, of the tailback. When it was two by two, we would do it off of matching teams. Palms, two read, we would take advantage of the fact that the apex had to expand. He was the swing deep, a three player. He couldn't get out leverage by three, so now when he left, we could throw the snag in that window, right? So we were taking advantage of the fact that they didn't have enough underneath players to cover all right, those potential underneath routes. And they were matching routes, so we were taking advantage of that. A team that kicks the coverage, rolls the coverage, clouds the coverage, now there really is no pattern match advantage, so they can sit on the snag, they can sit and hammer the flare, and they can be over the top of the corner. So now the lead swing takes advantage of the teams that want to be kicked or rolled coverage. And again, in high school to the field, you won't see it as much. Um, I don't know how much of a theory it is into the boundary. I, I never really loved it into the boundary in high school just because of where the hash marks are. But to the field, you won't see a lot of rolled or kicked coverages. Maybe in the middle you will. But if you have anybody that wants to roll or kick the coverage, now you can block the flat player that's responsible for the swing. So now you've got the same concept with a lead blocker out in front, which you probably run similar theories. If you run any RPO sneak or, or you know, um, Y flat concepts where you block the overhang, you block the corner and you read and throw to a sniffer or somebody in the flat. All right, it's, uh, it's very similar to that. You're, you've got a chance to throw a flat ball to somebody behind the line of scrimmage while you can block 
people down the field, right? It adds to your push motion game. You're just kind of adding some different levels to it or theories to it. It's four strong. You can get four strong. You can change the presentation and get as, as shift motion formation, you know, variances as you want to change where those guys are coming from, who the fourth is. Like I said, the Niners were a bunch. Move back to two back. Move the fullback again to get him out there in front and then throw the, the swing to make it four strong from there. I've seen it from empty. I've seen it from a bunch of different formations. All right, seems like it is a concept that you're seeing a little bit more of. All right, um, I'll now have to look at it. When my head coach showed it to me, I didn't really, I hadn't seen it much, didn't think it was much of a thing. We, to my knowledge, I don't know if we ran it at all, but he drew it up for me during the season. Um, and then somebody showed it to me again yesterday and then showed, you know, sent me a clip on YouTube of the Niners doing it. Um, makes sense to me. Seems like a good theory. Uh, could be an issue for us on defense, even if we wanted to roll or kick the coverage that way. Four strong is always an issue. Um, we start with three-man snag as one of our base variations anyways when I'm on offense. So to me, it makes perfect sense for what we do. It's part of four strong. It's, we can change it to you know, true spacing um, with, with two underneath routes and a flat route in the corner. Now four strong, we can get a lead blocker for the swing. So totally makes sense to me. Something I hadn't paid much attention to, but every once in a while you've got to be able to look at some things and say, okay, that might be an idea. So first time it came across my desk, didn't really like it. My head coach made me aware of that. This morning when I texted him that I was going to do this video, so he said, hey, I showed that to you and he didn't like it. And then somebody showed it to me yesterday and I thought, you know what, for what we do at least, everybody that knows me knows that we start in the, we start in the snag world. We start with three-man scat variations. We start with snag corner flat, read away from the mic. We build things off of push motion. So to me, it's just a, a, a natural part of what we do on offense. Um, the only thing I would do different if I went back and called offenses again is I would try and have a little bit more formation variation to where we could change the presentation a little bit more. But we were always a, a team that tried to play with decent tempo, so I never got crazy formationally. I was always worried more about the looks for the quarterback, the windows and the pictures and keeping things consistent for our RPO game. So um, something I would do that gives me some issues on the defensive side is run the same play, but change the variation of how you get to it. Um, and you can be as creative as you want with that. So again, check it out this weekend. You'll probably see it from the, from the Niners. You may see it from some other people, but if it looks like it's a swing with a lead block, check the other routes. It's probably snag corner with the swing flat blocking variation. All right. So good little wrinkle, neat little play. I haven't done an offensive video on here in a little while. So I thought it was a chance to get on here and talk a little bit. Uh, about offense and, and things that we used to do. Um, there's plenty of snag variation videos that, that I've done in the past when we were calling plays because it's one of my favorite concepts or at least one of my favorite passing game concepts on, on offense when, we're, when I'm calling the plays. I, I like the variation. I like how I can attack the middle of the field. I can get man beaters. I can read away from the mic. So just builds into everything that we want to do. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Turn the notifications on. You know, every time we do a video like this or go YouTube live, either tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow night's going to be the YouTube live night. Um, so I've been doing it once a week the entire off season. I'm going to continue to do that. If your notifications are on, you will know when we do that. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like this video, if you think it's a good idea, if uh, you know if you like it, or if I don't explain it well, or if you know the uh, you know the concept better than I do, if you've been running it or you've watched it in the NFL. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, I'm always open uh, to learn something myself. If you don't like it, that's your opinion. Thank you for watching the video. I will respond to any comment I get. Thumbs up, thumbs down on you. But I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Make sure you check out our sponsors. Email me if you're interested in any of the virtual clinics. This time of year, everybody's chomping at the bit to get some balls. So 20 hours of virtual clinics, $10, not a bad deal. Email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. Let me know. Hit up our partners. Appreciate everything you guys do for me. We are about, I think, nine or ten days away from four million views. We're about 9,000 views away. So depending on how good this video is or any other videos I do, um, I think we're about seven, ten days away from reaching four million views. And that's going to be a big day on the channel, all because of you guys. So thank you very much for what you do. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you next time.